Wednesday. It's a Wednesday type morning. Keep your date with the station that's great. 1560 oh. WTOD Radio. On this Wednesday type morning. I, I think it's uh, right. The fellow who said the other day, maybe that just connotes a lack of interest in the program, that he's never here. He's always messing around someplace else. And not, uh, well, try right in front of you there. How do you, uh, what do you think of that? Now? Do you think that I'd let you sit down without earphones? Yeah. Or that I'd let a situation come to pass wherein you didn't have your proper equipment? Well, who's in charge of the snow? You uh, Was that your... Isn't idea? that nice? Yeah. That's another trick I played on you there. This Fine, thing please. is... This, Bob's Rake, where, where'd he go? This just came apart here. Came right off. Yep. <laughs> Hiya. Hiya. Boy, oh boy, it snowed, didn't it? Yeah, it sure did there. Three inches. They three say. inches, really? Yeah, one to three inches, maybe four. Depends on who you listen to. Cleveland Weather Bureau says four. Uh, Detroit Weather Bureau says three. And the Toledo Weather Bureau says, why don't they keep their own council? And, uh, <laughs> and they're remaining mum. Right? Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Did you smoke yet? Uh, had a cigar. Had a cigar. Did you inhale it? No. Mm-hmm. Well, cigars are better for you, but they're worse for you if you inhale them. Is that right? Sure. That's why, uh, you know, people who smoke cigars are going to be all right and not get sick like you will from smoking cigarettes, but only if you don't inhale. Well, how do you know so much about all that? I read Reader's Digest in the doctor's office. I pay a lot of attention to things like that. You're the most unforgettable character I've met. Thank you. <laughs> Good morning, WTOD. Morning. Hi, who's this? This is Phil. What's on your mind, Phil? Um, not much. I just called to tell you that I really enjoyed the show, and I think you're doing a real great job. Thank you. I, I mean, it's uh, you know, it's like a change of pace from all that music, and sort of enjoy that half hour of Gab. And it sure is a change of pace, especially right after Kelly. Because <laughs> yeah, that's true. Who do you like for governor, Reams or Rhodes? Reams. Okay. Well, oh, and I have a comment to make on that. Ashley Keebler debate. Yeah. Last night? Last night. She I was missed pain, that. I think. I saw it. I don't think she did um, Ashley justice by running him down all that time. I didn't see it. What? Uh, well, when? How long was it to begin with? It was a half hour. Half hour. On TV, uh, huh? T-O-L, yeah. Uh -huh. and boy, I'm sorry I missed that. I was watching something. She was really running him down all night, though. Yeah. And every time it came her turn to talk, she had something to say about him, but he never said anything bad about her. Well, she wants to get elected there. <laughs> I think that's her. Yeah, I guess yeah. so. Gee, I'm sorry I missed that. Well, they were smiling at they each don't other. Do that. The they don't do that nearly often enough, have debates. I no, don't they think. don't. Is uh, Reams and Rhodes going to debate? No. Well, they're going to do that thing in Cleveland, aren't they? Or yeah, I guess they did, but the agreement was that it would be broadcast nowhere but in Cleveland. That's right. Oh, yeah. I, think. Oh, I wish they would. We'd Which be delighted to make our air facilities available to them. I think. I'd like to hear that, too. Well, mm -hmm. uh, Bob Bailey, the general manager at WDHO-TV, uh, is pretty incensed about that thing. He came out with an open letter, as a matter of fact, the other day. Uh, they were going to pick it up and rebroadcast the thing, but were, uh, had a restraining order put on them by somebody or something. Well, why? They said Did they say that, something that uh, <laughs> that is uh, digestible for Clevelanders, but not us, or what? I guess that's that's it. I can't understand why they would be able to debate in, in the Cleveland area where people could see them in Cleveland and not be able to debate in uh, Cincinnati, Columbus, Dayton, Akron. Well, you, you know, there really is a, a legitimate objection to, to debates, though, I think, and that's this. That if a fellow is, uh, I shouldn't say this because it's going to sound like I'm pointing at Fraser Eames Jr., but I'm not, but if a man is a... A skillful speaker and a skillful debater is not necessarily a good governor. This is true. This is very true. Uh, what else? You know. That's all. <laughs> okay, Phil. Okay, thanks a lot. Thanks for calling. Bye. Uh, our poll for governor is 40 for Rhodes so far and 34 for uh, Fraser Reams Jr. It got very close there a couple of days ago. You, One vote. It's the other way around, isn't it? It's 40 for Reams and 34 for Rhodes, isn't it? That's right. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Reams, yeah. Sure. Wow, hey. Uh huh. You know, I think this Crazy is what job. happened with Kennedy and Nixon in 1960. <laughs> they got it switched around. They got it like like no. Somebody, <laughs> somebody oh made a mistake there, and they yeah. got it switched around. No, oh boy, uh, How, how's your sense of humor today? Because we made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> You're really the president. Huh? But I think. Well, uh, Mr. Nixon, I think uh, it was so close as you remember, John. It was just you know, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, silly. And uh, I think that 
the thing that pulled it out was the uh, debates because Nixon looked so bad and he had a beard there and a quick smile and nervousness and so forth. And I'll show you how much I know because like I remember champion. seeing that debate. I thought he looked all right. Oh, well, listen, I, uh, there were four or five of them, uh, two or three at least. Well, the first one was supposedly the one where he uh, looked so bad. Yeah, but he looked but, like a. But he sounded bad too. Kennedy would give him that slow smile, you know, and bango, oh, that was that was the end of it, really. Oh, I would have hated to have debated Jack Kennedy. Anyway. Oh yeah, on anything. Yeah. yeah. Good morning. Whoops. There's a. Want to hear a dial tone? How many frequency? How, what do you think the frequency of a dial tone is? About 500 cycles or what? 500. Yeah, could be. Well, now they've tied up our phone lines for us. Our numbers are 242, and we've been admonished to give these more often because they're not easily remembered numbers. 242-2611 or 531-3173. WWJ in Detroit, Bob, has a telephone show at night between 7 and 8 o'clock or thereabouts. And last night, the only thing you could talk about was, what do you think the ramifications of President Johnson's uh, Southeast Asia trip will be? Mm -hmm. And by golly, you better uh, talk about that. And the first lady who called, there was a great squeal of feedback, and she said, wait a minute, and then someone broke a dish and a baby cried. <laughs> this fellow's name is George Kendall, and he does. You, you've heard Sure. George. Yeah. He's been with other stations, I think, than that one, hasn't WJR, he? WJR, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good morning, WTOD. Hello. Hi. This may sound stupid, but... Ooh, we can hardly hear you. Can you speak up? Yes, this may sound stupid, but how can you tell when you're really in love? I mean... How can you tell when you're really in love? Yes. Yeah. Well, it's about time someone asked that. Why, certainly. That's more uh, important than How the ramifications of Johnson's trip. Seventeen? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're seventeen and you want to know how you can tell when you're really in love. We'll turn that over to the general manager, who will now explain. My, uh, the first the thing I, fr I do first is quit smoking. When I, <laughs> right off the bat, when I'm in love, I quit smoking immediately. Mm -hmm. And, uh... Gee, I don't, I don't know how you tell you're really in love. You get kind of goofy, I suppose. I remember now. Let me think back here a minute. Well, the fellow I, I admired a lot when I was in high school was a fellow named Clyde Kiker, who was a teacher at Develbus, and he taught economics and civics, and was a socialist, and still is a socialist. But uh, he said uh, the one, one of the definitions, uh, not the only one, but one of them, is where you consider the welfare of the uh, love E <laughs> uh, above your own. That certainly would be one criterion, I guess, yeah. wouldn't it? Yeah, sure. Do you, do you think you're in love? I don't know. I mean, That's why you call. <laughs> you don't know, huh? No, I mean, I look at it this way, you know. I mean, well, my boyfriend's in service, but, um, mm -hmm. you know, I figure, you know, I'm just thinking about it, that there's, there's so many guys in this world, you know, and I look at it that way. And, and I, I feel that I haven't been around, I don't know. Yeah. It's funny. Well, you're not going to believe it, but at 17, you've got a long time to figure it out. Oh, I know that, but, um, I'm getting married next August. <laughs> well, well, you better find out before then. Huh? You better find out before then. I know, but I don't know how to find out. Well, do you consider that person's welfare above your own? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. Now, let's say you're both hanging from a cliff by a rope. No, yeah. that's that. Well, but, goodbye. Well, listen, who do you like for, who do you like for governor before you hang up? Oh. Roads? Mm -hmm. Okay. 40 to 35. There are a lot of books on that subject, I think. There are a lot of books uh, published for people who are about to get married or are contemplating marriage. Why don't you get one of them and read them? Okay. Maybe that'll help you thank out. Rather you. than calling the authorities Martin and Gary. Thank you, Ann Landers. That, <laughs> yeah. was, that was beautiful. Okay, thank you. Okay, bye-bye. I yeah. think you might be right there, John. I think if you consider the welfare of the oh. other person. If you're making two bologna sandwiches uh -huh. and you've got uh, a piece and a half of bologna... This is cutting it right down to the bare This is cutting it right down. And uh -huh. you've got a little bit of cheese there and some mustard. Mm-hmm. But, and you've got a, a crust of bread and and two other pieces, see? Uh-huh. Who do you give the old crusty mustard to that hangs on the side of the jar, you know? Uh-huh. And who do you give the most meat to? And who <laughs> do you give the crust of bread to? And if you give all these things to your lovey, then you're in love. Yeah. Because there's nothing that comes before bologna and cheese sandwiches with mustard on it. That's and if true. you give all these these good things, and you take all the bad things, you're bound to be in love. That's all there is to it. Well, we've reduced also, love down to bologna and cheese. throw up a lot in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> good morning, WTOD. Is this 10 to 10.30? It sure is. Hey, that's oh, a nice... Throw up a little bit there. I was wondering. Yeah. Uh, where do the flies go in the winter? They die, don't they? 
No, I mean, where do they come from when they come back in the summer? They lay yeah. eggs. Bob says he knows. Yeah, that's what they do. They lay eggs. And do you know this? I just read this not too long ago. If you, in the uh, in the fall, if you if you see two flies, see, uh -huh. uh, presumably they're male and female, I don't, but uh, presumably they're a male and female fly here, and you and you say, well, I don't, uh, can't find the fly swatter or don't, uh, or something, and, and these two flies, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> lay eggs, you see, uh -huh. in, in the spring, if you didn't kill these two flies and and all the eggs and everything that they lay, if they all live and become flies, you'd be up to your ankles and flies in the spring. And this is true. Well, this is the same thing that's true with alligators. Yes. <laughs> all the alligator <laughs> eggs. Yeah, this is true. Yeah, that's true. Baby alligators. I'd rather have a fly than an alligator. That's true. Aren't they, aren't they supposed to be dead now, though, the flies? Well, they're, they're mostly dying. They're pretty, they're pretty loggy. Oh, they're they're noticed they're, they're easy to catch at this time of year. Um, I caught one this morning. We're gonna fly it threw over it to here. its death. Pardon me? We're going to fly over here, man. They're fast and everything. They're no, they fast. They're not a killed one. They're no. fast and healthy? Usually at this time of the year, they're slow and you can catch them. That's what I thought, you know, but boy, something's wrong this year. <laughs> Maybe it's the uh, fallout. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I've noticed there aren't any more flies in the WTOD studio, and usually this is the last place, you know, when they're... Uh, oh, this is the first place. Yeah. When they're gone everywhere else, there's still one or two around here. Uh -huh. <laughs> and mice. I guess they just die of old age, don't they? Around here. I wonder if the weather stayed warm, if they would live or if they'd die anyway. And they'd probably live, wouldn't they? I don't know. Sure. I, get, I understand that the, uh, the winter stayed warm and the fly is. Several months, just a few months, I guess. Mm. I don't know what to tell you about your flies over there, but I'll bet uh, within a couple of weeks they start to disappear. All right, I'll tell you if they don't. Yeah. they will send them out to you. Okay. Uh, all right. Box all them up. Right. Who do you like for governor? Uh, Roach. Okay, 40 to 36. All Thank right. you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye. We ought to go on record as uh, being opposed to flies. I'm opposed to flies mm -hmm. and alligators. Uh, Sean McCarthy mm -hmm. was born this morning to uh, Mr. and Mrs. Bob McCarthy of Pickway Shoes. That's in by way of uh, being a commercial. Uh-huh. And uh, it's it's actually, it's not Sean at all. It's C-A-N. S-E-A-N. So yeah. It's got to be C-A-N. can't be Sean, can it? Who is the uh, Irish poet? Sean, Sean uh, O'Casey. Well, I don't know. He wrote, uh, never mind. Mm -hmm. Good morning, WTOD. Yes, I'd like to give my vote for Reams. For Reams? Yes. Okay. And I'd like to bring up about these boycotts and girl cots they're having in other, co in other cities. Girl cots? Yes, some of them have called them girl cots now. I see. And uh, I understand on my television last night that uh, Mrs. Keebler is against this as not being effective, but Mr. Ashley says that this would help. And I'd like to say that I think it would because I know in some stores you go and buy a certain item and you buy it in another store and you may pay at least five cents more for a can. Mm -hmm. Well, they tell us that the stores are making perhaps only at 2% or two cents on a dollar. Now, in some cases, if I buy five items that are five cents more, they're already making a quarter from my purchase. Now, last night, um Mrs. Keebler uh, said what now? She said the, the, uh, the boycotting and the The protesting. boycotting would not be very effective. It would only last temporarily. Uh -huh. And that the idea that, I guess, Toledo is starting the idea where the housewives are to write to their congressmen or representatives or to the president, yeah. that this would be more effective. How do you feel about it yourself? You're in favor of them, apparently. I am in favor of having one, yes. Are you participating in the, in the one here locally? No, yeah. I haven't. I only heard about it yesterday. I haven't mm. done anything yet. Well, there we are. <laughs> so. Uh, you, you're talking about uh, occasionally a, a can of food will be five cents more in one store than in another. Yes, that's right. I mean, well, I, I was told once that, you know, that this is true, and I was told this by a fellow who I probably shouldn't identify. Someone might get mad about it. But, uh, for example, if a can of peas is, more, is five cents more in store A than store B, store B has probably got something that's five cents less than store A. Some stores uh, price their meat lower. And uh, they don't make any money on the on, on on certain items. They don't make money in order to make money on others. I see. Yeah, that could be true. <coughs> yeah. too. It just seems perhaps it's the items which I buy, which makes a difference. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hey, here's an interesting thing. They were complaining about the uh, price of steel went up a nickel a ton or two cents a ton or something. You know, the price of bacon has increased something like uh, six hundred seventy dollars a ton in the last year. Okay. In the last year? $670 a ton. Well, well... we better not eat too much bacon. I guess not. There goes those bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwiches. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, ma'am. Thank you for calling. Sure, yeah. Bye. Bye-bye. Who keeps tying up our other line there? We're going to have to... Uh,
go out there with a rolled up newspaper and meet out some punishment. I <laughs> Who keeps giving you those fantastic figures like that? You got a source? I'll tell you where I guess. heard it. Uh, Paul Harvey. Well, that's an, an unimpeachable are. source. Sure. I listen to him on WXYZ. <laughs> mm -hmm. Good morning, WTOD. Good morning. I'm calling about uh, that lady that just talked to you about boycotting the supermarkets. Yeah. Um, I was doing some research on this, and it's actually doing no good. It's um, boycotting the ailment without uh, boycotting the disease. Uh, the, 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 the symptom you mean, yeah. That's what we were talking about the other day, that the uh, the higher prices in the supermarkets are a symptom rather than the Right, they the aren't charging so. high prices because they want to. It's because they're paying the high prices. There should be something that we could do to uh, to go right at the, at the high prices. Yeah. The boycott the individual stores. The cause of the high prices rather than the prices themselves. Right, if you pick out one item instead of an entire store. Yeah. Then that one item would be forced to go down without affecting the store itself. Yeah. That uh, might be a better idea. Uh, you say you, you did some research. What kind of research did you do? In this? Well, checking statistics in uh, in a library at, at the university. Oh, really? Uh, the cost of goods over a period of years. Uh huh. Where uh, if you were to attack one item at a time instead of an entire store, you would have much better results. Oh, I see. You mean when the price of bacon starts to rise, you stop buying bacon? Stop buying bacon. Of well, that'll bring the price down. There's no doubt about that. Right. It's the law of supply and demand, I guess. It'll take a, a little bit longer to attack one item at a time, but it would be getting the cause of the problem and not just the symptoms. It would be focusing the, the power of boycotting a little more effectively. Right. Huh? What do you like for governor, by the way? Reams, but I've already voted. Oh, you have? Yes. Well, you're an honest man. Yes. Okay, thanks for calling. Yeah, he's already you. voted. Okay. He's not too honest, I'll tell you that, because oh, the I election isn't until the 8th. Gee, I, I hope uh, he meant on the show here. Oh, that's a little bit of levity. That's when I was trying to pick this oh, program oh, out of the, the, the morass. And hey, Steve Allen is pretty funny. <laughs> I bet he is. I bet he's a smash. Yeah, they had the the uh, five, the four stepbrothers. You ever seen them on television? Yes. Mm -hmm. Tremendous. And they had Terry Gibbs. Oh, great. Was there. Yes. And Jane Meadows was there. She's lovely. Was really easy. Ooh, is she lovely. She's I a mean, lot lovelier. Terry Gibbs. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and Joyce Kilmer's another nice girl. Joy, the wonderful Joy Kilmer. I remember her well. Let me say this. Let me they ask you this. A, they named an army camp after her. Yeah, that's right. They did. Camp Breckenridge. Breckenridge, yeah. yes. Listen, let me ask you this now. Does, um, well, does let me tell this. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on just a minute. Hmm? Does Steve Allen, when he does a nightclub act, is, uh, does he get a little smutty or does he keep it pretty clean? Uh, he kept it pretty clean last night. He said some things he wouldn't have said on television. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. I didn't expect him to do it. Well, there was nothing uh, that you couldn't take your grandmother to see. There are things that uh, people say every day that you can't say on television. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't think there was anything uh, blue about the act at okay. all. And he rarely does a nightclub act, you know. I know. He does about once a year, and this is the one. And he and, uh, chose the rooster tail in Detroit, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. I see. Okay. A lot of funny things. He, uh, For one thing, <laughs> apparently the, the stage crew set up or something was a little sketchy, and he had to move the piano himself. You know? He plays the vibes almost as well as Terry Gibbs, This is which wild, is pretty yeah. astonishing. Was Terry Pollard there with uh, Terry Gibbs? I don't know. I don't yeah. think so. I think they would have said so uh, okay. had he been. He'll be there another four nights, as a matter of fact, if you she. want to see him. And she, she they. Good morning, WTO. Hi. Hi. Uh, I just want to say two things. First, that I want to vote for Governor Rhodes because he's brought up our employment figures so much. Mm -hmm. And also I want to say that Pickle Road doesn't stand a chance. How about the radio station on it? <laughs> <laughs> well, the road in the place. Thank you. Okay. That's the nicest thing you could have said. One of the nicest things. Oh, what's the other one? Well, oh, you could have said that my hair is growing out nicely. Oh, well, that's true. Of course that you wouldn't have been true, of course. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Ah, isn't that nice? People call yeah. him and say things like yeah. that. Is, is that man a bus driver? He's a cab driver. By golly, no, it's a bus driver. Bus driver. Bus driver. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. 253. 253. Number 253 is here from the CTC. Yeah. Our numbers are 242-2611 or 531-3173. What? Maybe we can get him into trouble by telling him that number 253 is out here and his bus is parked outside <laughs> and a bunch of the people on the bus are plenty <laughs> mad because they're not getting where they want to go. I wonder how he got out this far. The buses. I wish a bus ran out this far. So do I. We had an employee here once who lost his driver's license. And... Uh, it's a long walk from Detroit Avenue. Good morning, WTOD. Well, for heaven's sake. Hmm. Probably they're... <laughs> or not. They're uh, attempting to call Western Union or something. 242-2611, or you can call 531-3173. That one is tied up right now. Someone is calling in for coffee and donuts. Did, uh, is loose. did Steve Allen last night mention anything about his political aspirations? Yes. Uh, you know, they, have, they let you fill out cards. 
uh, yeah. any questions you'd like to yeah. ask Steve and uh, uh, one of them was, uh, who do you th who do you consider to be the greatest living actor today, or the greatest yeah the greatest living actor today? And he said Ronald Reagan. <laughs> 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 and then they they did a uh, he dressed up like uh, Senator Scruff or somebody. And Jane Meadows explained that he is a Democrat, but she is a Republican, and this uh -huh. is apparently true. Yeah, because uh, Steve Allen wrote a letter uh, a book called A Letter to a Conservative, and he is a a real liberal. You know, he's a and Ronald Reagan, to him, is a, a comic character, and mm -hmm. he let everybody know about that. But he didn't get into politics too much, except uh, just, you know, general knocking of politicians in general in this uh, sketch he did. He said, uh, so what do you think of the state of the Congress today? He said, why, you couldn't buy a better bunch of men. <laughs> <laughs> Things like that. You know. Good morning, WTOD. Good morning. How are you? Fine. How are you? Yeah, uh, well, I'm talking. I want to vote for Reams. Okay. And uh, I understand you were talking about uh, Keebler before and uh, mm -hmm. Ashley. Yeah. And I agree with the fellow that talked. I don't think she should run him down like she does because he didn't do that to her. Yeah, I wish I'd seen that. And I, another thing, I think women should stay out of politics. I think she should stay home and not even be running for an office like that. Do you really? Yes, I do. Okay. I think that's a man's job. What do you think? Woman's place is in the home, right? <laughs> That's right. Carrying out that garbage and cooking those <laughs> bologna and cheese sandwiches. <laughs> oh, and uh, I'd like to wish my uh, mother and father a, a happy anniversary. It's their 48th uh, wedding anniversary today. Is Mr. that right? Mr. and Mrs. George Deitch. Mr. and Mrs. George? Deitch. Beach? Deitch. D-I-E-T-S-C-H. D-I-E-T-S-C-H. Deitch, Deitch. 48 years today, huh? Yeah, it's a long time, isn't it? Well, congratulations to them. I hope they're listening. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, bye. Thanks for calling. <laughs> Bye-bye. Here we go. The fellow is from the... Uh, Heather Downs the Express. The Heather Downs Express stops out here, out here on Burn Road. Well, right out here? Does it, really? Mercy. Land of Goshen. I didn't know that. Uh -huh. I didn't either. I, I've never... Heard I don't agree with that lady. Don't you? No. I think... Just uh, a moment, please. If you're qualified... Uh, I was going to say this about Reagan. I'll get back to my point here in a minute. But, you know, so many people are disqualifying him and precluding his uh, his attempt to run here for governor of California simply because he's an entertainer. Yeah. And this is so silly. I mean, because he's an entertainer, I don't know. You know, it has nothing to do with it. Now, he's going to get some votes because he is who uh, he is Ronald Reagan. Right. And he had so many of those nice movies that you and I went to in the 30s and 40s. Yeah. But this doesn't mean that he's an idiot doesn't mean that no. he doesn't know what he's talking about. It doesn't mean that he couldn't be a good governor. I think it may tend to balance anyway. itself out. There'll uh, be as many people who go, I'm not going to yeah. vote for an actor, yeah. a song and dance man. But oh. it doesn't mean that he's a nut. And by the way, the latest polls uh, show that he's ahead of Brown, who's a pretty right. good governor in his own right, yeah. but kind of a, you know, nondescript type fellow there. And so Reagan has this thing. I, I, I don't know who I would vote for were I a Californian, but uh, the state is pretty loused up. And I think maybe uh, I'd, I'd have to go with Brown simply because of the experience that he's had in running this goofy state out there. And well, it is. I mean, I'm not talking about the people who live in California or anything else, but some of the laws and so forth they have. Have you ever been there, California? I, I never have. Uh, I? Just, you know, reading about, uh, for instance, Los Angeles and what a mess. Our, our bus driver friend says, yeah, yeah. California. Mm -hmm. well, I have no and, desire to And the same thing holds true of a woman. I don't think you should preclude her simply because she is a woman. I think, for instance, Margaret Chase Smith and people like this are fantastic people. Eleanor Roosevelt. Is Eleanor it? Roosevelt, uh, sure. Good morning, WTOD. Hello there. Hi. Uh, I'm on my way to uh, Cleveland this morning, and I wonder if I can uh, if I can get a hold of a tape of the uh, Reams Road uh, debate thing. You wanna you wanna risk your license running it? Well, I'll tell you. Uh, how do they prevent you from? Well, first of all, there's this. You see. Uh, if it's a, a tape uh, of a broadcast of another radio station, no one can run it without the permission of that radio station. Right. And apparently that radio station, or TV, whichever it was, or both, uh, has agreed not to give the tape uh, to anyone. Yeah. We appreciate your uh, efforts, though. On the well, other hand, if you do get hold of a tape, yes, we'll risk our license running it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, okay. I do have some contacts. Uh, I'll see what I can do. Who do you like for governor, by the way? Uh, I like Regan. Regan? Yeah. How about, how about in Ohio? <laughs> no, I, uh, I I don't like either one. No preference? No. Okay. Thanks very much for calling. Mm -hmm. Let us know about the tape. Okay, we'll okay. do. Okay. Bye-bye. He has a preference. He doesn't like either one. I think he ought to put down FB for foobaw. I think that's what he wanted to say there. Foobaw? Foobaw, yeah. Good morning, WTOD. 
Hello. Oh, well, hiya. Hiya. I got a star finger from dialing. You did? <laughs> That's good news. Yeah. And not for your well, finger, but that means a lot of people <laughs> are listening, apparently. Uh, listen, uh, I want to vote for Reem. Okay. And uh, remember yesterday you were talking about the blade? Mm-hmm. And about the stray? Uh-huh. And why they are out? Mm-hmm. Well, I have a friend that works there, and she said that they are striking for wages, pension, and the management. They're fighting the management. Yeah. Because if you get to be an executive, they don't want you to uh, belong to the union, I guess. Yeah, I guess that's true almost everywhere. Uh-huh. Once, once you become a leader of men... If you're management, it's, it's kind of hard to have a management union. Well, when yeah. you get to be an executive, they really don't want you to belong to the union, I guess. That's the problem. Yeah. And mm-hmm. <laughs> that's this is true. It. This is true sometimes even in factories with foremen. Yeah. That listen, becomes a foreman. I, I, I was listening to this young girl about 17 trying to, find, you know, say she was in love. Yeah, what's your feeling on that? Just tell her when the right man comes along, she'll know. She will? <laughs> Yeah, she's got a long time to wait. Yeah, 17. Boy, I wish I had that problem. Poppy love. <laughs> okay. So long. Thanks for calling. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. I still think the bologna sandwich is the infallible. The uh, the scene qua non. How do you like that? <laughs> Not bad. Is that dirty? <laughs> WTOD. Hi. Hi. Um, I have two things I want to say. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want to tell my sister happy anniversary. It's her first anniversary. It'll be Saturday. Oh, what's her name? Uh, Kathy and Tom Phipps. And then I want to wish my brother a happy anniversary to be his second one on the 7th. Boy, yeah. they're just piling up there. Yeah, Barbara and Calvin Squire. Uh-huh. And uh, that girl that called in and asked if she was in love, mm-hmm. uh, just tell her that when she's in love, she doesn't have to ask somebody if she is in love. She'll just know. Yeah, that might be a point, too. Yeah, yeah she doesn't have to go around asking everybody if she's in love. To go around making thick bologna and cheese sandwiches for that fellow without even uh, giving it a second thought. Yeah. yeah. Who do you like for governor? Uh, Rhodes, but I already called in before I told you. Oh, did you? <laughs> yeah. Well, we, oh, we, our listeners have integrity you wouldn't believe. You know, um, I was trying to call that 242 number. Mm-hmm. And for a while, nothing would happen. It would just be, uh, dead-like, you know? Yeah, this happens when there are too many calls coming in, apparently. Oh, it wouldn't ring or anything. Yeah, uh, one day we had calls going into Lima. Oh, through one of our little tricks that we're always playing on the phone company. Yeah, and I just yeah. want to say I hate the snow, too. <laughs> Do you? Yeah. Don't you even like the first one? Nope. I don't think much of snow either, but that first one, boy, you look out in the morning and there it is. And yeah, I didn't believe it when they were saying it this morning on the radio. <laughs> yeah. I, I like the first one, though. Uh-huh. Matter of fact, I'm going to get out Bing Crosby's The First Snowfall of the Winter and play it a little while here and make uh-huh. everybody mad at me. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, thank Thanks you. Thanks for calling. Bye. Bye-bye. Do you believe that, John, that if you, uh, if you really are in love, you know it, bango like that, and... Uh, yeah, I think so. I think... Uh, incurable romantic, aren't you? Well, uh, no, I don't think that's uh, necessarily being an incurable romantic, you know. I mm-hmm. think it's... Uh, Sort of a, a thing that seizes you and what are I you played, what are you doing? I played Jingle Bells this morning. You did not. Yeah, right. By the Ventures. <laughs> 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 Kelly uh, picks up the spirit of the season automatically. Yeah, you, no, know? No. you know, no one has to say anything. He's just he's yeah. got it. Jolly Sandy. Gee, we don't have time for any more calls. We have another minute though. Mm-hmm. If you have anything you'd like to get off your chest. I don't uh, really. I, I, uh, there were so many good things that happened this morning. You know, we can talk about whether you're in love or not, and whether the supermarkets are good or not, and uh, whether Reagan is good or not. And so it was a it was a lovely uh, morning. I enjoyed it. I don't want to plug the rooster tail particularly, but I don't think my plugging it would help them anyway. They aren't going to buy any well. time. They're anyway. not going to buy any time know. anyway. But uh, if you have a chance, you ought to get up and see Steve Allen because it's a great show at the rooster tail, and he is uh, he's got to be a great man, I think. Because uh, he could make it doing any one of the of the many many things he's able to do professionally, and, uh, and I was going to say also that if the people who are striking the blade are striking for higher wages and better working conditions and and less hours, and they don't like the management, uh, I think that probably covers it, doesn't it? Just about pretty yeah. well. Yeah. Say goodbye. Goodbye. This is WTOD Toledo. We'll be back tomorrow morning at ten o'clock, ten thirty at the sound of news. <laughs> Charbot Mutual News. LBJ in Alaska returns to Washington tonight. Red Chinese Revolution in trouble. Ambassador Harriman meets with Pope Paul. The full report after this message. Have you tried it yet? The new invisible tape. 
It's the tape in the bright green plaid package. Scotch Magic Transparent Tape. Press it down on paper and it seems to disappear. The neatest taping job you've ever seen. It's great for sealing packages, attaching notes, all the jobs for which tape is so handy. Scotch Magic Transparent Tape has real sticking power. It's permanent.